Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to give you some tips to help stop Copic bleeding. And I don't mean bleeding through the paper, but bleeding when you're doing your coloring and it bleeds outside the lines of what you're trying to create. And I want to talk first about how it happens because the obsession with the perfect blend, I think, is the problem. Here, if you want to leave the white belly on the rabbit, you try to make a softer color, a lighter color to fade into that that light color and it just keeps taking over until the belly is now going to be a cream one. So now you have to darken everything else to make the belly look lighter and you start adding colors and then those edges, you want to soften them. You want to make them perfectly soft. And I put forth that you don't really have to be that perfect. Go back and look at my Copic waterfall drawing that I did just recently. I'll link you to it in the uh, doobly-doo as well as at the end screen on this video. You don't have to have perfection, but nonetheless, that's where it really starts is because we're trying to make everything blended. And when you're working with a small area, it just keeps taking over and you keep pouring more and more color in until it starts bleeding. The hedgehog on the left, I had started doing the same thing with, and I was trying deliberately to channel what I see other people do when they're struggling. And the whole stomach had taken on that really dark color. So I tried to wait until it was a little drier to push some lighter color back in and then had to soften the edges. And it just became a, a mess, just bleeding all over the place. Having this problem years ago was what started me making scenes on cards because I wanted to cover up all that bleeding. I didn't want to waste all the coloring. So in this stamp set, I stamped, as you saw, three of the critters. You can also stamp the whole scene with them all put together and not have to do any masking or anything. But I created a scene around them that would cover up those areas that bled around the animals. You could do a strip, just a little strip of trees behind them or something. It doesn't have to be a massive scene, but creating something behind them helps. I mean, you can fussy cut them out, that sort of thing, but on little creatures like this, it can be a problem to try to do that. Next tip is to use good paper and I don't necessarily mean you have to have the highest end of anything but if you're trying to go really cheap just know when you're doing anything with art supplies the cheaper you go the less productive things are. The GP110 is available at Walmart it's really dirt cheap versus the Nina which is what I use and the GP110 is going to beat it on price but look at the grayishness of the color for one of the paper. It's not very bright. It's also not as thick as a Nina 80 pound paper. Even though it says 110, it's not really technically 110 because it's an office paper. It's not an art paper. And I guess technically Nina cardstock that I use is not technically an art paper, but it works better than the GP 110. And I did this head to head test because I couldn't really remember what I didn't like about the GP 110 from years ago. Because when I was you know, struggling for money, I bought that and was coloring on it. And it's really hard. There's a drag on the paper that you don't feel when you're working on the Nina. It doesn't get things really smooth, which means you have to do more work. You're scrubbing more to try to get more color in there to get it to blend. And I found that immediately on the GP110. There's all kinds of weird modeling going on in there. And then the Nina didn't have as much a problem with that. Normally, my solution for that when I've just tried really hard to get my blending perfect is to just let it rest for a minute and then go back in with one more pass, a real quick pass with just a very, very minimal strokes of perhaps the mid-tone color. And I tried that on both of these. The GP110 didn't really do anything when I did this. I, it worked a little bit, but not very much. When I did it on the Nina though, it worked right away. And whatever it is about the paper, if you're having trouble with a lot of bleeding and you're really pouring ink in to try to fix it, step up to the next level of paper, whatever you can find. It doesn't have to be Nina, but it might be your paper. So this card, when I finished it up, was with this stamp set, I used a couple different classes that I teach. So the tree is from the holiday interiors class, the scene with the hallway down the in the back and the flooring is from the blueprints class. So if you're interested in getting those, but I put enough color behind this because I wanted the whiskers of the cat to stand out and I used a white gel pen to add those in. So next up, next tip 
using more colors. If you're going from a very, very dark to a real medium and then to a really light color, you can end up doing a lot of scrubbing and just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to try to melt out the edges of say the dark color as it goes into the medium or the medium as it goes into the light. If you use instead of the traditional three colors, if you use six or seven colors, which is what I'm doing here, I think it was seven colors. If you use a whole bunch of different colors and really build that gradation with lighter marker strokes, you're going to be pouring less of the color into the image itself. You're just staying on the surface and using a lot lighter colors. For fabric, this is especially great because you can get all those folds, that sort of thing. And this stamp set has both a boy and a girl in it. The girl has her hands out and the way that I stamped it, I decided not to mask her other hand because what I did was create a dramatic scene so that I could hide the fact that her hand was, she's kind of got her hands on the other side of Santa, but I put the lighting in the back so that I could then really dr drama dramatize, dra dramatize, that's the word, <laughs> dramatize the lighting, putting lots of shading on Santa, lots of shading on the girl, leaving just the highlights in the center. And when I did that, it gave me room to put the holiday interiors class tree as well as the fireplace in there and a little bit from the blueprints class and combine all that so that you didn't really notice that the hands were stamped weird. If I hadn't told you, you might not have known that. Next tip is to put some cotton paper underneath. And I say cotton, it doesn't have to have actually be cotton, but it shouldn't be something shiny because Copic marker blends within the fibers of the paper. That's where the action happens. So having something behind it that is going to catch all that extra color that goes through the paper is going to push it potentially back into where you're coloring. It's going to add more marker to it. So you can see underneath here, all of that pushed back up, would have pushed back up into the scarf, but instead it was absorbed by the paper underneath. And that is a huge thing. Don't use a mat or anything underneath of yours that's made of plastic or glass. So this card, I put a kind of simple-ish background behind it, just put some trees back there in the dark and did some dramatic lighting. And I just put heavy shadows on one side. And if you've ever got something like a kitten here in this picture where you can do something dramatic with the feet, figure out where the lighting can be that those feet indicate a really good light source. It's one thing to have the shadow on the snowman, but as soon as you put those little feet there, it just looks amazing. Next up is using a white gel pen to fix things. And we're all experienced with using the white gel pen probably. I use the Signo Uniball white gel pen. And on an image like this, there's also some other decisions you can make. One of which is not to use red for this chair. The reason is if you know that you have trouble with red bleeding because red is hard to blend and that makes you end up using lots and lots of ink and pouring into it, Notice that there's a little tiny string for the stocking and there's also a tiny tail for the mouse sitting on the cushion. And you know this is gonna bleed. You just know it without even having to start doing the coloring. So use a light color for it and don't, don't put yourself through this if you don't wanna to have to use a white gel pen. White gel pen on color is often going to absorb the color that's underneath of it. And that's just the way it is, I don't know of any really good mediums for using with this. I mean, you can use some paints and stuff to try to put some white on things, but I tend to think that that's overkill when you've got a Copic marker card. I prefer to just use a white gel pen, and this does work for me. Remember with gel pens, you don't wanna press really hard with it. You need to leave room for that ink to roll around that roller ball. See if that helps you to get your gel pen working better. So for the finishing off of this one, I made dramatic lighting. Again, I love dramatic lighting, where the light is all coming from the moon. I put the sentiment right over top of the part of the card that I didn't like, because underneath of that, I tried to draw the legs of the chair, because there's no legs on this one, <laughs> and I screwed them up and it looked terrible. So I just covered it with the sentiment, but I kept all that lighting coming from the moon, hitting the window and just those areas. Next up, create a distraction. Squirrel, over there, just look over there. If you can create a distraction on your card, 
then people will be looking where your art tells them to look. And the thing that is going to do that is either contrast. So the darkest darks next to the lightest lights usually tend to be the things that draw attention. So you want to draw their attention to something specific that is not the thing that you had the bleeding problem on. So I was having trouble with the sleigh. I couldn't figure out this construction of the sleigh. The lines on it, I just couldn't visualize what it was supposed to look like. So I just put some general shading in there. But I created a distraction with the scene. Again, just using that, that scene to fix the things that I didn't like. I put dramatic shading on Santa. And I put it uh, dramatic shading on the deer as well. You can see the full stamp set here. It's almost full size for a slimline card, but not quite. It's a little shorter. But I threw some color into the trees entirely. There's no white snow on the trees. And then there's little highlights on the snow on the ground and then the white in the moon. And then just a couple highlights on Santa and a little bit on the back of the deer. And that's it. I left everything else muted. And you don't even notice that the sleigh is a, a whole hot mess. Like I just didn't know how to color it. I, I don't know how anybody would drive that sleigh that I colored because I know I did it wrong. But Nonetheless, next tip is to let it rest. Lots of people think that you have to color it right away while it's still wet, and it's not necessarily true. In this card that I did, I let it rest repeatedly throughout because there's a lot of coloring going on here. I stamped the mice and then masked them out, and then behind it I stamped the house, and I put all kinds of details in that. And every time I got to an area where I felt like I'm getting close to where it's going to bleed, I stopped and I moved to something else to color. I started putting on the icing on the roof. I started adding, you know, some of the dots, the white pen dots onto the gumdrops and stuff. I added elements of the scene, the backsplash, the cabinets and everything and the counter and the shadows. I just moved from one to another so that one area that was starting to get too saturated and too wet would dry. And then you can go back in and rework it. You don't have to like totally re-soak everything to get it to blend. Just move on to something else when you start feeling that bleeding coming on. Now this stamp set has no Copic coloring in the cards that I made. This is a background that I'll link you to, something I did on my Fine Art Instagram account, uh, I guess a couple days ago. And I did some beautiful backgrounds. It was a giant piece of scrap watercolor paper that I didn't like. So I did a different technique on it so I wouldn't have to paint and ended up using some watercolors to do something totally different and crazy and added these sentiments to it from this beautiful stamp set. So that is my tips on Copic marker stuff. I want to remind you that the holiday challenge, send me a holiday card is still on. I've been getting some cards that have come in. They're coming in faster as time goes on. Each time I go to the mailbox, I get more and more. So thank you for that. The PDF is linked in the doobly-doo, so you can check it out if you have not heard about it. I'll also put the link to the video down there as well. So that is it from me. I will see you again soon. Be sure to check out the new release for Colorado Craft Company because there are lots of fun stamps, especially if you like making scenes like I do. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.